Here's Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you joined me for another Inspiration Friday. If you're new to my channel, click on the link below to subscribe and also click on that bell and YouTube will alert you each time I upload a new video. I try to do that every Friday. That's why we call it Inspiration Friday. I always try to bring you a DIY video on something new that you can make. This week's project are these handy little hand sanitizer carriers. Right now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to go anywhere without my hand sanitizer. And it is so nice to have it hooked on the outside of my purse so I can quickly get to it as soon as I've left a store or I've went anywhere. Maybe I'm in a restaurant. So this is a quick DIY project. And let me tell you, you can use your scrap material for this project. So give me a second. Let me get my camera angle changed. I'll meet you back at my craft table and we will get making. Hey crafters, let's get started on this project. So I'm so glad you joined me today and I don't know about you, but nowadays no one can live without their hand sanitizer. I usually have it stashed in my car or I've got it stashed in my purse and sometimes when I have it stashed in my purse I'm digging for it right the minute I get back in the car I want to grab my hand sanitizer so I perused online and I looked at lots of different um, people what they were doing for hand sanitizers I even thought to buy some but you know what I decided I've got so much scrap material this does not take much material you guys these are super cute and of course they're using my snap kit that I absolutely love too. So I like the Bath and Body Works um, little bottles. And so these are originally designed because it's got the curved edge here for them. That opens up really nice. You can hook this right on your purse. Um, I've just added a little lobster claps with a D-ring um, on here. Now I know a lot of people are using the spray. And so I did find this spray at our local little shop. Um, so it's actually a spray bottle of um, hand sanitizer. And it works just the same. So I could hook this one right on my purse. So I have a myth buster um, on my blog post. My husband had commented that, hey, you shouldn't leave your hand sanitizer in the car because it might catch on fire. Um, so you have to refer to my blog post to see what the, the truth is in that. But Let's go ahead and get started on this project. You guys, scrap material does not take much material and you can make all different colors. What a fun present for people. Um, lots of people graduating right now. Quick, easy little graduation present or you can put one with each one of your purses. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with what you're going to need um, for supplies. Now, I've got two different types of ways I'm going to give you guys the pattern. One is I've got a PDF out there, and so this is a PDF that you guys can download. For those of you that are Cricut owners, I'm also going to give you a cut file so you can cut the pattern out um, right with um, um, Design Space and your Cricut. So you guys choose. It works both ways, okay? So that is a free pattern available to you guys. Not much material here at all, you guys. This happens to be a 18 by 6 piece of material, and that's all I need for this project, okay? I am going to use my snap kit, and I will make sure I um, link it down below. I um, picked up this little um, container holder at the Dollar Tree, but I just love having all the different colors um, of snaps. And then, of course, the pliers um, for the snaps. You are going to need a sewing machine for this project. I also absolutely love using my um, felt pad to get a really good press um, on this project. And of course, I'm going to use an iron and I'm going to need some scissors. Now, one other thing that I like to do is I like to trace out my pattern. Now, you can definitely use a fabric pen um, or like right here, I've just got a, um, a Sharpie that I'm going to use. So I'll show you um, how we're going to use that. And basically, the only other thing you're going to need is if you want to add in like a D-ring or a um, lobster clasp, I picked these up at um, Hobby Lobby, and they are the um, Sewology Swivel Hook and D-ring. Um, I've also got a link below. Um, to, you can pick these up on Amazon. So I will link all the supplies down below so you guys can um, see what all 
I used. Um, and then let's just go ahead and get started. So the very first thing I like to do, and I'm going to go ahead and use the, the pattern pieces I've already got cut out. I do want you guys to know, though, that this PDF is at 100% already. So you can see that it is exactly, you've got part A, cut two, part B, cut two, and then I've noted where to leave it open. So there is a step-by-step -step on the blog, um, if you guys want to refer to that after you watch this video, but let's just go ahead and get started. So really easy, you guys, fold your fabric in half. I like to put my right sides together, especially because I'm gonna use a pen to trace out the pattern, okay? So this is why it doesn't take much material, you guys. I'm just going to put that right there, and then I'm going to see where I can get this other one fit in here, and see how easy it is. So there's gonna be two pieces of each piece of material. Now, one thing I do like to do when I'm using my pieces that I cut out for my Cricut is I do like to turn them upside down, and the only reason I'm doing that, you guys, is so I don't get pen marks on my pattern. I also, when I'm cutting these out with my Cricut, I do like to use cardstock. Um, the pattern seems to hold up a little bit better um, with cardstock. Definitely, though, if you're printing the PDF, cutting it out by paper, that works just fine, too. Um, if you can print on cardstock, that would be great. But just go ahead, and I like to trace. Now, you guys don't have to do this step. You guys could pin this, and you guys could cut just like that but I really like just tracing it. And like I say, I've linked below a fabric pen that you can use. I'm right here, I'm using a Sharpie because I was hoping that you guys would be able to see this just a little bit better. So I'm gonna lift that up and you guys can maybe see where I've done, cut out the pattern piece. Okay, so easy as can be. What I'm gonna do next is I am just going to cut it out Now, you could cut this out with your maker. You could put this fabric um, on your mat, on your maker. Um, I just find that it's a little bit easier, and to be perfectly honest, with you, I think it's almost a little bit faster just to go ahead and cut the pattern piece out and then cut this out. But by all means, if you have a maker, you can take the pattern piece that I'm gonna give you and you can upload it to Design Space and then you can pick your material as cotton, um, put your rotary um, wheel on, and you can have at it. So definitely another option, but I just want to show you um, how to do it just with a straight pair of scissors. Lots of people have that. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish cutting this out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start working on the pocket first. And we're going to do finish off the edges of the pocket. Now, I'm using my sewing machine for this entire project. Um, I have not tried using my serger for this project. Um, I think it might be a little bit tough to do it with the serger, but um, if you guys want to try, you sure can. But I just find that it's much easier um, just with the sewing machine. Okay? So this is what we've got, you guys. We have got two pieces of part B, and we have got two pieces of part A, okay? So we're gonna put part B off to the side for a minute. And on part A, what we're gonna do, and I show it on the pattern piece so you guys will be able to see it, is I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine, and I'm gonna do a seam just around the half circle there and across the top here, okay? And so I'm going to plug my iron in here, you guys. So it's gonna be ready to go when I get back from my um, sewing, okay? So again, I'm gonna take this. Now, I like to kind of eyeball it and it's right in there between an eighth inch and a quarter inch seam. So, um, Go ahead and you're just, we're gonna sew right along here and we're gonna sew right along here. So I'm gonna join you over at my sewing machine and we are going to sew this. 
Okay, so let's get started with the sewing. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in and I am just going to, like I say, I'm eyeballing it. It's about an eight inch seam. I'm lining it up with my presser foot and I am going to um, do a knot, of course, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing and very easy. And then I'm gonna do a knot clip my threads and there we are with the first stitch okay so I've just done a very small seam right there now what I'm gonna do is I am going to um, go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and do the curved edge now the curved edge you want to make sure that you go slow with your machine okay and always make sure you give yourself a knot. Okay, and then just go really slow with your machine because the key is you want that curve edge to be very even, okay? I'm gonna put my knot in. I'm gonna clip my threads. And so I've got a nice stitch going all the way around here. Okay, so now I'm gonna meet you back over at my sewing table and we will do some pressing. Okay, so now I've got my seams done and one of the things we wanna do, cause we want this edge to um, turn really nice. I'm gonna very carefully take my scissors and just put little slits. Okay, I'm not putting any wedges or anything like that, just little slits. And I'm being really, really careful. Um, if you guys can see that. I'm just being really, really careful not to go through my stitches. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clip my edges. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn this right sides out. Okay, because we sewed everything with right sides in. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give that top piece a press. Okay, so my iron's nice and warm. And I always say whenever you got to do any top stitching or any finished stitching, a good press is the best thing you can do. Now, the trick to this one is I like to pull them just out down the corners like that. And see, because I did that cut, that's going to lay really nice, those slits I did. Okay, so we're just going to give that a really good press. Okay, then what we're going to do is we are going to layer together our project. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give these guys a quick press too. Just so they lay really nice for us. Okay, and I need to grab some clips. One thing I forgot to tell you guys at the very beginning, I do use, like to use my clips. Now, this is the trick in this layering, you guys, okay? We're gonna put the first one right sides up. Then we're gonna take, this is gonna turn into our front. We're gonna put our front with the circle, It's kind of hard to see when I'm putting it down, but the half circle is gonna go at the bottom. Remember when we make our project that we want to be able to get our sanitizer out okay so that's going to go at the bottom then we're going to take this layer and we're going to put right sides okay then what I like to do is I like to take my clips so it stays together when I take it over to the sewing machine I just like to clip all the way around and we're going to give this a Again, I'm eyeballing it, you guys. It's not a full um, quarter inch seam, which we usually use when we're sewing, um, but it's right between. I'm gonna measure it up with my presser foot. And so one thing to keep in mind here, you guys, and I'm gonna mark it. I normally would not mark it with a, a Sharpie, but I just wanna remind you guys, on the pattern piece, I had said, leave a space open, okay? so. What we're gonna do is we are not going to stitch right there, okay? We're gonna start on our sewing machine right here. I'm gonna go all the way around and I'm gonna stop right there, okay? 
So I'm going to join you over at the sewing machine and we're going to put a seam all the way around this. Okay, we're back at the machine and remember how I said I have the marks, right? So I'm going to go ahead and match that up with my foot so I can see right through there where my mark is. I'm going to start my machine and I'm gonna put a knot in it. Now my machine does an automatic knot. If yours doesn't, just make sure you do a back stitch, okay? Now my machine also has a guide. My brother machine also has a guide here for how fast I need to go. Make sure you can control your speed, okay? Because you want your edges to be even. And so you want to be able to, and if you need to, you can turn your corner. You want to be able to have even edges. So just take your time here, you guys. And if you want to do like I'm doing to get that corner, go ahead and bring your foot up and then it just makes it a little bit easier, okay? Now I am doing a very close seam. And I'm just gonna go around this corner. Bring my foot up just a little bit to help myself out. And then you want to stop, bring your foot up and do your neck, okay? And now this rounded corner is a little tricky too at the end. If I can get you guys a little bit better angle, I have a feeling my hands are in the way quite a bit. And I'm going really, really slow here, you guys. I'm gonna bring my foot up a little bit, just to help me out. down the end of the neck and then remember we want to I like to eyeball where my seam was on the other side so we keep it even say so take your time here you guys and then remember we've got that pen mark we don't want to go past it okay so like I say my machine does an automatic knot I've also got a thread cutter, which I absolutely love. And so I've just clipped my threads, okay? So we've got that sewn all the way around. I'll meet you back over at the sewing table. Okay, so we're back over at my pressing mat at the sewing table. And before I do any turning, what I wanna do again is very carefully, I like to cut right in that neck area, right there, that's gonna help that corner turn. And then I'm just very easily going to make some slits around my corners. Now, if you guys have got pinking shears, this is a great time to grab those pinking shears out. I just didn't grab mine out, so I'm just going to stick with the scissors. Okay? So you want to hit every corner. And the whole reason we're doing the corners is so we can get our corner to lay really nice when we turn it and press it. Because we are going to put a top stitch on this project. And so it just works really nice. Now, we need to turn this right sides out. Now there is a little trick. I like to take my finger in here and I like to feel that the neck piece or that opening and making sure that I'm turning it the right way, okay? So your hole's kind of little, so you just need to take your time and work through it. And then the tricky one is doing that tab or that neck, making sure that you get that all turned. And so you can use a pen to help you turn it. Um, I've used bone folders before. There's all different things you can do. I've got this handy dandy little bone folder that I like to use. Oops, be careful I'm going in the wrong way. <laughs> um, and so you just need to get that neck pushed out. And sometimes, Sometimes it even just works doing it with my finger. So this is probably the, the toughest part of the project, you guys, is getting this little guy turned. So just take it easy and work it. Let's get that one a break for a minute. Let's go ahead and make sure we got all the other areas pushed out nice. So I just like to take the end of this little folder 
and push out all my corners. How cute is this polka dot one going to be? Now remember, we've got that spot open where we turned, and we're going to want to press that. So I just like to kind of fold that in really nice. But first, we have got to get this little guy taken care of. Okay, you guys, persistence works. Okay, so I finally got that guy all taken care of. Let's get these guys out of the way. So what I need to do now is I need to give our project a good press. Okay, so I want to make sure that I've got those edges tucked in. And since that was such a skinny seam, you guys, it's really important that you have them tucked in. And we're going to make sure that our top stitch picks that up. Okay. You guys can see those edges are laying really nice where I did the slits right at the corner. Okay. I just want to make sure, give it a good press because once you put your top stitch on it, it seals it all in there. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead. I've got a little thread hanging out here. I'm going to tuck that guy back in. I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. And we're going to do a seam all the way around. The complete um, little carrier, we are going to put a top stitch on. Okay? So join me over at the sewing machine, and we will get that done. Then we're going to add our D-ring, and you guys, this project is done. Okay, we're going to just put a top stitch. And again, I am just using my foot as a guide for my top stitch. I'm going to go all the way around. I'm going to put a knot, of course, in, and then I'm just going to go all the way around and just go slow again so you're making sure that you've got a nice, even top stitch. This is also a really important step down at the bottom because you don't want your bottle of um, hand sanitizer to fall out. already and then I always like to test mine to make sure my bottle is going to fit in right okay so I'm going to go ahead and and sometimes it's a tight fit and that's okay okay I'm just going to push it down there and I'm making sure that my bottle can open up let's go ahead and check the other type just to see if it's going to work we'll be able to check both of them out this one might be, this one's going to be a little bit too tight for this one. So that comes into how you do that top stitch, okay? So just keep in mind, the original design was made for the um, Bath and Body Works one. Depending on how you do the top stitch, or maybe make it a little bit bigger, or don't do a top stitch totally, um, you might be able to get the other bottles in. But I originally made it for this type of bottle, which is what I use all the time. Okay, so the only thing left we have to do, you guys, I'm going to take my pressing pad away. I'm all done with the iron. The next thing we need to do is we need to put some snaps on. So I'm going to grab my handy dandy little snap kit. And I'm going to go ahead and go with the white ones. I think that would be a cute contrast on here. So you're going to need two of what I call the covers. And then you're going to need two of the other pieces. Okay, and so just make sure I get two different ones. Okay, so I'll put those up to the camera so you guys can see those a little bit closer. But basically, you guys can see, um, I call it a male and a female. Um, and so this one is pointing up and this one is inverted. And so what we're going to do is we are going to first, I like to do the top one first. So I'm just going to poke it right through, okay, just literally just poking it through. Does not matter which one you grab, you're just going to, so I'm putting the inverted one in or which would be called the, the female piece, and I am going to 
use my um, snap tip and the flat side, the black side is where your cap goes and then you just snap it. Easy as can be. I like the eyeball kind of where I'm at here and then I am just going to the cover on this one, a little different, the cover on this one is going to go on the inside. And then you're going to put the other piece right here. We're going to put our snap piece in. And you guys are all set. All I need to do is throw a D-ring or a um, clamp on it. And I have got a finished product. So again, just throw your carrier in, put your snap on it, put it on your purse. And there you go. So again, these are just a few of the different ones that I have been making. A lot of it, you guys, has been out of my scrap material from all the mask making I've been doing. Um, but it is fun just to find some different material um, to make these. So I hope you guys like this um, video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And thanks so much for joining me for another Inspiration Friday.